Hello friends, this is Displace, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get the Shadow Step rune. This is a really great rune that is useful in closing the gap between you and the enemy, allowing you to get easily behind them, and also providing a nice movement buff. Before we begin, if you can please subscribe to my channel and like the video, I would be forever thankful. This helps me grow my channel, which allows me to help even more people, and helping people is what I like to do. The Shadow Step rune comes from a quest line that starts at level 30. Just like the Deadly Brew rune, this quest line is going to take you into a dungeon to retrieve an item. Unlike the Deadly Brew rune, this one is a lot easier to obtain, and the entirety of the quest takes place in Silver Pine Forest and Tristful Glades. A few things before we get into the details of this rune. You will have to be level 30. This quest will not start unless you're 30. You will also need to have collected the Deadly Brew Rune first. If you haven't, you'll need to get that before you can actually do this one. And if you're Alliance, you can also complete the quest Mythology of the Titans while you're getting this rune. You can pick up this quest from Librarian May Pale Dust in Ironforge. When you hit level 30, you're going to receive a letter from C in your mailbox. It tells you of another job and directs you to the cabin next to Pyrewood Village. This is probably the longest part of the entire quest chain, which is running to that cabin. If you're Horde, it's a little easier, as you can run from the Sepulchre to the cabin and back again. If you're Alliance, unfortunately, South Shore is your only option. Once you're at the cabin, open the chest and find a note asking you to retrieve an artifact known as the Eye of Bosha that's inside the Scarlet Monastery. It also tells you to get a disguise before going in. So accepting this quest is what actually starts the quest chain. From here, we're going to go up to the Scarlet Monastery, which is located at the northeastern part of Tristful Glades. We need to be careful as we approach the monastery because there are level 29 elites roaming the area. At 30, they're really easy to sneak past, so it shouldn't be a problem. Before we go into the monastery, we're going to want to hang left and go to the back where you find the stables. Although I stealthed here, as you can see, I actually don't think you need to, since I don't think there are any mobs around here. Inside the stables, we're going to open the chest and get the Scarlet Initiate's uniform. Although you don't technically need it, it is going to make the quest a lot easier, as we won't need to sneak around the dungeon. Just a side note here though, you can't actually equip the uniform until we get into the dungeons. Once we have the disguise, we're going to head up the stairs into the Scarlet Monastery, and into the graveyard dungeon. It's going to be the first dungeon on the left hand side. So once inside, we're going to equip the disguise and notice how utterly ridiculous we look. In fact, I actually think this was the true downfall of the Scarlet Crusade. The fact that they couldn't figure out that there was an undead rogue in a paper mask. But I, whatever. This disguise will actually cause all of the Scarlet Crusade members in the dungeon to be neutral to you. It's important to note though that things like attacking or stealthing will actually break the disguise, so you need to be careful. What we're looking for is an NPC called a Scarlet Scryer. So there is a potential bug, and at times all of the NPCs in the actual graveyard could be Scarlet Torturers. If this happens, you're going to need to exit the dungeon and reset it. I found one Scarlet Scryer at the very end of the dungeon, right before the actual graveyard. So you're going to need to pickpocket him for the Scryer's key, which is going to break your disguise. So just be careful of the patrolling torturer. Once you have the key, back up, put your disguise back on, and head out of the dungeon. Once outside, we're going to head across the way to the library dungeon. This is the first dungeon on the right-hand side, or as we're leaving the graveyard, it's just going to be straight ahead. Once inside, we're going to put the disguise back on, and we're going to need to go to the Anthenium, which is towards the back end of the dungeon. The first section we go through is actually called the Gallery of Treasures, which holds the Reliquary Chest. This is not the chest we're looking for, so if you come across it, ignore it because we can't open it. We will actually be coming back for this chest later, though. So once inside the Anthenium, there's going to be a wooden box on the shelf. Go ahead and open it. Don't worry, your disguise is not going to break. 
this is going to give you a confidential message that tells you exactly how to get the reliquary key, which is, amazingly enough, back in the graveyard dungeon. So let's head back there. Once in, head all the way back to where the graveyard actually is. You're going to need to stealth through this area, but don't worry, it's not that hard. From here, we're going to need to sit on a bench on each side of the graveyard to reveal the hidden chest for the key. Now the note states, you must sit on the benches between the pair of statues. If you sit on any other bench, it's not going to work. So head on over to the one on the left, being mindful of the ghosts and the undead. If you accidentally pull one, uh, you should be able to kill it without any problems if you have decent gear. While stealth, we're going to go to the bench between the statues and use the sit emote. These benches actually don't work like the others, and you have to manually sit on them. However, you can remain stealth while doing this, so you shouldn't aggro anything. If you're successful, you're going to see a message in chat that says you hear a faint click. Go to the other side and do the same thing. If successful, you're going to see the same message along with a new one that states you hear the sound of stone moving. Now, we need to go to the mausoleum to the right. Again, being careful of the mobs here. It's easiest to go the back way, but as you can see, I actually did aggro some mobs. Um, so once you get past those mobs and get into the mausoleum, there's going to be a stone coffer that we need to open up to get the reliquary key. Once we have the key, we have to make our way, guess where? Back to the library. So head on over there. Once inside, we're going to put on our disguise again and go to the gallery of treasures and unlock that reliquary chest that we came across before to get the Eye of Bosha. Once we have it, we can make our way out of the dungeon and back towards Pyrewood Village. At the cabin, we're going to open the dead drop chest and complete the quest. For the last part of this, we're going to have to go back to a major city. A town will not work. It needs to be a major city. This is probably the stupidest part about this entire quest, especially if you're Alliance. So the strategy here is Horde or Alliance, we're going to go to the Undercity. As Horde, once you fly into the Undercity, your mail icon is going to pop up. For Alliance, you can actually sneak into the sewers on the side of the Undercity and just go in until you see your mail icon pop and then go back to a town that you can actually read your mail in. Once you're in the city or have your mail icon, the letter is going to direct you to go back to the same dead drop that you just left. So now we have to run all the way back to Pyrewood Village. Once back, open the dead drop chest and get your rune. Congratulations, quest complete. I thought that this was a fun quest, but let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in Azeroth.